all the organizations who participated in putting this together, please come to the steps, please. Okay, everyone, I'll introduce myself and I'll have someone from my organization speak and then we'll just drop the mic down so everyone knows which organizations put this together. Y'all already know, I'm Maya Woods and I'm the president. Yeah. I'm Marco Garcia and I'm the secretary of MDC. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Ryan Haynes and I'm a leader of the Eastern Shore for Justice and Reform. Hi everyone, my name is Jasmine Davis and I'm one of the founders of the Collective Majority. What's going on everybody? My name is Tori Paxson and I'm one of the co-creators of The Race Thing. Amen. Until about four o'clock, we're gonna do some chants and play some music. And then following that, we're going to have some speakers. And then before 5 o'clock, we should be out of here. <laughs> and we are getting, there's a cooler up here with some ice in it. We're getting some waters to put in it. And I also saw a car over there that says free H2O. So please stay hydrated, wear your sunscreen, wear your mask. And thank you all for being here.
the voices of those being, not being heard across the shore. Our main goals are education reform, police reform, and to establish more accessible community resources. I'm ecstatic to be here in solidarity as an entire community together. The unity of all of our counties in support of Dr. Kane is beautiful. Racism, <laughs> racism is still very prevalent throughout our nation, but not only our nation, it's prevalent throughout the Eastern Shore and all of our counties. Also, racism isn't a controversial topic. It's not. It's a human issue and a social justice issue. And we want social justice. I would like to thank everyone for coming out and standing in unity with Dr. Kane in this peaceful protest. And I want everybody to keep the momentum. After we protest, don't just go home. Keep working. Yeah. And I'm going to conclude with one quote. A man or woman who stands for nothing will fall for anything. Malcolm X. A few weeks ago in Cambridge, we had a mural painted on Ray Street. And I would like to introduce everyone who was our artist. Hi, everybody. I'm actually so glad to be here. I shared a picture with my children online, and everybody was sharing it, which I'm grateful that you guys are, because I support Dr. Kane so much. Me and my family, the whole Bruce City, everybody, to support her. This is something that needs to be said. You are important to us. You. You are important to us. We're going to protect you. We're going to protect you. What you do for this community, they need to acknowledge that. And we're going to keep on, we're going to keep protecting you. We're going to keep on talking about this. This is just the beginning. If I have to paint a mural of you on that street, I will. Thank you. And this is some artwork that she made herself. All right. Black Lives Matter is not a political movement, but rather is part of a social injustice issue. Dr. Kane has an amazing track record here in Queen Anne's County. However, she didn't become an issue until she mentioned the importance of acknowledging the 15% of people of color in her school district by encouraging open and honest dialogue about racism in Queen Anne's County and voiced her support for Black Lives Matter. Note, similar superintendents across the state of Maryland, like Dave Brumwell in Dorchester County, had made statements about Black Lives Matter, but there was no uproar, tiki torches, or pitchforks in sight. The Eastern Shore public school system has a diversity in scholars. Being a recent graduate of Cambridge South Dorchester High School, class of 17, I can definitely see how race plays a huge part in the education system. In my high school honor classes, there could be 28 students and only eight would be black. In the Common Core, it was completely switched. Um, in Dorchester, we too once had a strong African-American woman as our county superintendent. We did not protect her the way we should have, which resulted in her being harassed by the color of her skin. Our Dr. Mitchell was highly qualified and genuinely cared about the Dorchester County students. Before Dr. Mitchell, nobody showed up to Board of Education's meetings. But while she was there for only one year, everyone showed up to voice concerns on issues that predated her. I don't want Dr. Kane to leave Queen Anne's County on the same terms that our Dr. Mitchell left us. That is why millennials demanding change is getting involved. We must all learn from the past so we don't continue to relive it. Thank you, everyone. And now I'm passing the mic over to Jasmine. Sorry everyone, I have bad eyes, so. All right, so as I mentioned before, my name is Jasmine Davis and I'm with the Collective Majority. 
First and foremost, I want to thank you all for being here today and all of the other group leaders for helping to organize this. This is a day that we ought to be proud of. Yes. Yes. Round of applause. Yes. The Collective Majority is a community activist group that brings awareness to racial injustice in Maryland through discussion, education, and advocacy. Our group was originally formed as a place to empower others to use their voice to speak out against injustice and cultivate creative solutions to change. Now as it stands, we are a group of strong, young leaders who are desperate for change and willing to do what it takes to get there. I am both honored and humbled to stand before you today in support of Dr. Kane. I had not had the pleasure of meeting her prior to today, but the words of her email echoed across the entire Eastern Shore, across the state for that matter. Doing the right thing is oftentimes the most difficult, but it determines the legacy that we leave behind. Civil rights leader Ida B. Wells once said, the way to right wrongs is to turn the light of truth upon them. The truth is that racism in all of its forms exists right here in this county, right here on the Eastern Shore and all across the state. So we thank you, Dr. Kane, for being brave enough for being brave enough to speak the truth and acknowledge that we must do better as the future of this nation depends on it. We stand with you today, tomorrow, and every day after that. We thank you. Y'all gonna have to bear with me. I'm not used to doing this by myself. If anybody has seen my show, they would know that. My name is Tori Paxson. I'm the co-creator of The Race Thing, talking about all things race-related in Talbot County. But, as you can see, I am not here in Talbot County today because, as Jasmine Davis just pointed out, race is an issue all across the shore. When we all gather together, we aren't many voices, but a loud cry that echoes across the shore. We have strived together to overcome trials and tribulations. We have been ignored and discredited but we have never stopped fighting against injustice and racism. And next up is Mr. Richard Potter, a man who needs no introduction, the NAACP president of the chapter of Talbot County. Good afternoon, everyone. First, let me thank the organizers for this today. It's a beautiful affair to see an inclusive community out here supporting uh, Dr. Kane. So give yourselves a round of applause. Today we gather to say to Dr. Kane that we stand with you and we support you on all fronts. I must admit that these incidents are not done in isolation. We have had several black superintendents on the eastern shore here of Maryland and all of them have encountered systematic racism. Dr. Mumin, Caroline County. Dr. Boston, Wacomico County. Dr. Mitchell, Dorchester County and now Dr. Kane, Queen Anne County. I was complex when I happened to read the article of the Baltimore Sun dated August 6, 2020, titled On Maryland's Eastern Shore, a county superintendent is under fire for supporting Black Lives Matter. The article gives an account of Gordanian Skenechvelli, who happens to be a native communist of Yugoslavia. She saw Dr. Kane's email introduction to race in the message as bizarre and divisive. What is bizarre and divisive about engaging in dialogue around race and experiences in an effort to understand your classmate or your fellow citizen? What is bizarre and divisive is not engaging in the conversation, knowing that our communities are growing more diversified every day. Ms. Scaccinelli further explained in the article, and I quote, Dr. Kane's comments were inappropriate because Queen Anne's County, a mostly rural place of nearly 50,000 people, about 85% of them white, has no significant problem with racial hatred. I must again ask Ms. Scaccinelli, out of the 50% of the population of Queen Anne County, who are the people of color, and how many of them have you spoken with about their experiences of being a person of color living in Queen Anne County? Your racist statements dismisses the feelings and experiences of our black and brown community. 
According to the professor and author Abram McZendi, you are either a racist or an anti-racist. The difference, the stated difference is that one has to be willing to be educated and learn from others' experiences as it relates to race. All of your rhetoric, Ms. Scaffinelli, is racist rhetoric. And it has no place in this community and no place in America. We all should be striving to build an inclusive community where everyone is embraced and valued. As I close, I leave you with the words that have gone viral in the last few weeks. The words of the late Congressman John Lewis. We must start to create good and necessary trouble. Today, today we must leave this place with a renewed commitment for standing for what is right. Let us commit to being more involved in our children's education and taking advantage of our teacher-parent conferences, volunteering more in our schools, and most importantly, showing up at these local board meetings, speaking up about these injustices, and recommending that we work together to diversify a curriculum that reflects the struggles and achievements of our black and brown people in America. Let us from this day forward stand together Hand in hand, united as one. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. God bless you. Thank you so much for that. That was wonderful. Thanks, everyone. We'll have Miss. Mr. Flowers, um, the president of Maryland's NAACP, he's next to speak for you guys. I say black lives, you say matter. Black lives, matter. black lives. Matter. I say black lives, you say matter. matter. Black lives, matter. black lives. Matter. Hey, my name is Willie Flowers and I came all the way from Ellicott City this morning, so I just wanna. And let me, let, me, let me let you know real quick, I didn't come to tell you to do anything. I came to support these young people, support this community, and to support the queen. Oh, hell, the queen! I want to, um, before I get started, I wanted to um, get, get you to know all the branch presidents who are from the Eastern Shore who are here. Could y'all please come up so y'all can know who is out here supporting you? They did not come here to play around. They are part of the largest and the oldest, the baddest and the boldest, the most loved, the most hated, the most feared and revered, the most cussed and discussed civil rights organization on the planet, and that's the NAACP. If you are a member of the NAACP, let them know who you are real quick. If you are a member of the NAACP, if you're not a member, find somebody and join the NAACP. Hey, check this out. Like I said, I was not gonna come here and give you no history lesson because y'all don't need it on the Eastern Shore, but I did drive to the city and I saw Jeff Davis something and I said, oh God, maybe it ought to change my mind. But the quick history lesson is that as much as we are talking about all of this, is still about the same thing, and that's systemic and institutional um, racism. And if we don't do something to start it, stop it, we're going to be in the same situation for years to come. So I want to acknowledge these young people. Give it up to the young people. Not only are they putting their lives on the line doing this work, but they're the organizers that we need. Um, and and, if you, and let, let's get this right. You can do everything else you want to do. You can, you can get another Dr. King. You can get another Martin Luther King. But if you don't have organizers to do it, we're not going to get this thing off the ground. They have put on display that the time is now and they're doing the right thing. So give it up to them. Now I do want to um, say, I do want to say this because I looked at this Many kind of ways, because when you're on that bridge, you got a lot to think about, right? And I wanted, I just want to acknowledge that um, when I was coming here and talking about this thing about Queen Anne's County, it hit me that we have Queen Anne, right? <laughs> Miss uh, Dr. Uh, Andrea yes. is the queen. 
So I want to I want to keep her and her family in our prayers because that's that's the most important thing. And if we don't if we don't do that, we're gonna be off off base, right? So whenever you are thinking about this situation, don't think of it as a political issue. Think of as, as it of somebody who who had a dream to probably just be a teacher. And look at this. You know what I'm saying? And we gotta remember to applaud her and support her. We came all the way over here to support her because if she goes down, we go down. Because um, it's, it is also the case that if we continue to attack people who are trying to do the right thing, um, and, and you know, it wasn't even about the Black Lives Matter, she just came here to do her job. And so if we take her out, then equity is lost. We take her out, then these basic curriculums are lost. The discussion about racism and history and and Jeff Davis and the truth about that scoundrel, it will not be told. So we got to remember this stuff. So I want to um, just close by saying all of that. I love everybody here um, and continue to fight, con continue to um, support these organizers. And don't forget that you have your job to do as an organizer as well. And I would encourage you to su support um, Black Lives Matter on the shore support the NAACP. Again, join the NAACP and let's get this thing to moving because we need you now more than ever. Yeah. I want to acknowledge um, Carl Snowden. You want to come up here real quick? Carl Snowden came here also yeah. out of Anne Arundel County and I want to make sure that um, y'all know that he is here for support. He's doing, he's, he's, I, I'll let him talk about it, but he didn't just walk here. You know, he ran here, took some, um, yeah, the duck and dodge and all that to come here. But I want to make sure that y'all know and can hear his voice. Let me, uh, before getting started, ask Dr. Kane to come here for a second. Dr. Kane, I want you to see something. There's a very simple. I want people to hear this and hear it good. I grew up on a farm. I know something about farms. There are two insects that I used to watch very carefully. One was the bumblebee. Bumblebees are bigger than hornets. Watch bumblebees. When you grow up on a farm and you watch bumblebees, they have a nature, and the nature is that if you wanted to kill bumblebees, if there's a thousand bumblebees, you can kill them one at a time. A hornet is smaller than a bumblebee. But when you touch a hornet, the entire hornet nest come at you. They've touched a hornet and they didn't realize it. Dr. King has a family and supporters all across the state of Maryland. They have made a terrible mistake. There's a German word called Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist means the spirit of the moment. We're in a different era in America today. We're at a point where people won't accept injustice. I want to tell you this quick story and then move to a quick conclusion. Way before many of you young people were born, in a place called Montgomery, Alabama, there was a woman called Rosa Parks. Wow. Miss Parks lived under a system that discriminated. One day, Miss Parker said, "Miss Parks said enough." She refused to give up her seat. Mrs. Parks was arrested that night. She's only 42 years old. Somebody asked her, "Why on that day did you refuse to give up your seat?" And Mrs. Parks' answer was, it was something that happened in the summer of 1955 to a young boy by the name of Emmett Till who was lynched and murdered simply because he allegedly whistled at a white woman in Money, Mississippi. His mother, who brought this 14-year-old boy back to Chicago to, bury, to be buried, that was her only son. His body was so mutilated by racists that the mortician told her, do not 
show the body, keep a closed coffin. And as preachers will tell you, is that right, Bishop Coates? They tell us to prepare. We have a Lord who has prepared us a place in heaven where there are many rooms. And as the preacher was saying this, Mrs. Till did something that changed history. Mrs. Till ran to the coffin, opened up the coffin so the world could see what happened to her son. She said, my baby, I want the world to see what happened to them. And as it would be, Ebony Magazine took a photograph and that photograph changed the way people looked at race relations in America. It set off a new movement. Fast forward, 2020. There's a police officer with his knee on the neck of a man for eight minutes and 46 seconds. That photograph, like the photograph of Emmett Till, has changed how people behave and how they respond to racism. When Rosa Parks was arrested that night, a 26-year-old minister the world had never heard of said to Rosa Parks, Sister Rosa, it is better that we walk in dignity than ride in shame. And they refused to ride the buses for 381 days. Here's what we need to do. As hornets, we got to understand our power. This is 2020. It's unacceptable to have her fired from a job for other than words, Black Lives Matter. Now here's what I need everybody to do. Three things. <clears throat> Number one, tomorrow morning, every one of you should be calling the Queen Anne's County Board of Education and making it very clear to them it's unacceptable. We will not tolerate her losing her job. That requires you to make a telephone call. Number two, in America, the way we make change, the way we change America is through our right to vote. If you're not registered, register to vote. And in November, remember. And lastly, I want the young people who help organize us to come here one more time. I want you to stand by Dr. King. I want to show you something. Let's give these young people a round of applause one more time. Now please take a look at the young people who are standing next to Dr. King. Look at them. These are the future leaders. These are the people who's going to make the difference. And one of the sisters said something so brilliant that I want to repeat it to underscore it. She said the issue in Queen Anne's County is not limited to Queen Anne's County. It's an issue that affects the entire shore, Maryland's eastern shore, but it also affects America. And never before have we seen so many young people all over America demanding a society that reflects the values of the American people. For educators in this audience, I conclude on this note. There are two men that's famous in American history. One is named George Washington. Most of you know he was the founding father. Another man named was James Madison. Some of you who study your civics know that he was one of the founders of the Constitution. But there's a black man that most Americans have never heard about. That's why Dr. Kane is important when she talks about making sure the curriculum reflects the contributions of African Americans. If you were to Google this name, if you Google this name, there are people who are PhDs who don't know it. If you were to Google this name, there are those who run the Board of Education who don't know it. The name is Madison Washington. Now I know many have not heard Madison Washington, but he was an African American. He was a slave who organized mobilize, energize, and free people of color. Dr. Kane is our modern Madison Washington. She is the catalyst for the new change that's coming.
It's coming. I can see it. Queen Anne's County will never be the same because Dr. Kane came this way. God bless you. A new talk continuum, which simply means the struggle continues. Councilwoman Donzilla Wilson here to speak to everyone. She's making her way here, guys. Because, see, Dr. King said if you can't fly, then what? Did we know? If Dr. King said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. And if you can't walk, then crawl. But me, you, and every one of us have to keep moving forward. We have to keep pressing forward. Because Queen Anne County is my home. I went to school across a couple streets over. My little people still go to school here. So we are not appreciative of the way that they have tried to smear your name. We're unappreciative of that. And I heard class of 93 is in the building. That's when I graduated from Queen Anne's County High School. So we just want you to know, Dr. Kane, we've had many conversations. You've had an open door policy to allow me to come in and talk to you about whatever it is we needed to do. Our 100 minute distinction was postponed, but what we were planning was to use those donations from that event to send some students to Hampton University at her request. So that's where those donations were going. Dr. Kane is a forward-thinking person. She has the best interest of every student at Queen Anne's County High School. So these conversations, the clutch conversations is what they were called from the star students talking about racism. And I know those students are here today because I've seen some of them and one of their facilitators walking around. And so they've been at it for three plus years. So this is not anything that just came by night. So they will continue that mission. But what I was asked to do, Mr. Paul too, one of the co-founders of Maneri's Dream Alliance with myself, with the nonprofit, he was asked to speak and he asked if I would deliver his words today. He said, me, you and Paul have sat down many times at the table. So he says, Dr. Kane, it's clear what we are facing. It's clear what we are dealing with the opposition. They would have you believe that Queen Anne's County is a utopia that doesn't suffer from the ugly racism and injustices that the rest of America suffers from. The opposition would have you to believe that equality is a threat to patriotism in this county. I equate them to a misinformed, misguided subculture that plagues this nation, a subculture that has always existed here, a subculture that the current administration has bought out in droves. The facts are racism is alive and well, right here. The facts are the vast majority of this community wants change. Our kids, in fact, are demanding change. These young people are demanding change. You can see this in their diverse circles of friends, the music they listen to, the cultures outside of their own, who they have chosen to identify with and include. But that subculture is so afraid of losing power, of not being dominant, they have dug their heels in and instead of learning and wanting equality, they would rather spew lies and slander. They would rather attack people they disagree with instead of fostering meaningful, honest, and open dialogue. What's so disheartening about these folks is they cowardly do it under the guise of patriotism. I love this country, even though she doesn't always love me and people who look like me. Blacks have bled fighting for America. They have died on foreign battlefields, given the ultimate sacrifice a patriot can give the ones who are lucky enough to survive war. When they came home, they couldn't even get service in restaurants upon their return or fully take advantage of the GI Bill. These are our facts. To smear an attack simply because you disagree with someone is far from what the real patriots had in mind for this country. That the opposition has stirred up a hornet's nest in this community of both black and white, young and old and straight and LGBTQ. Our women are sick and tired of being sick and tired. We all are here today in solidarity and peace and unafraid. We are supporting our school superintendent and the youth of this community. In order to foster real change, we must engage in uncomfortable conversations. We must humanize all people and look past cultural differences and bias. The time is now, I beg you to fall 
off in this fight. I beg you to not fall off in this fight, but see it through until change happens. And I would just challenge everybody to get engaged, get organized, and get out to vote. Yes. everyone. Now we're going to open the mic up to a public public forum. If anyone out there would like to come and speak on the mic, here's your opportunity. My name is Henna Paracha, and like Tori before me, you will find us on YouTube and Spotify as The Race Thing, making informational videos that amplify black voices that have been invalidated so we as individuals, as people of color, feel isolated in our own thoughts. We are collected here to question the education system, which is defined by the core value of teaching, but only focuses on teaching the right child. The child that doesn't cause a problem and the child that doesn't need an extra push. And as if that wasn't bad enough, the curriculum rewrites history to gear it towards representing only one experience, the white experience. When William Du Bois is omitted, the Tulsa Wilmington rides are omitted. When George Washington is elevated, yes. while the work of slaves who built America is omitted, yes. redlining is omitted, yes. Black Wall Street is omitted. Yes. When Confederate statue is elevated as part of history, yet the fact that slaves are sold on the very grounds that serve as justice in Eastern are omitted. The worries of white parents for their children to feel a little uncomfortable in discussions about race is elevated, while a black woman who is fighting for a better quality of education by engaging children in important discussions about how race impacts every child and her impe impeccable work as a superintendent is omitted. Yeah. Yeah. This is all a race problem. It is the race thing. Racism is encouraged by us if we don't question the system that has been built on oppression. Racism is in our education system, the law enforcement, and in our politics. It has seeped into the cracks of our society to the point that it is erupting like a volcano. We're gathered here not because of our political values. Sorry, I'm so shaky. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Race is not a bipartisan political issue. It is a human issue. We will no longer stand for anything that invalidates our experiences when the plaque of our particular race has been forced upon us based on the color of our skins. Okay. We cannot let Dr. Kane be reprimanded for standing for the, her rights and the rights of students that depend on her to be taught the value of humanity, the value of each individual, and the value of every single experience of every child. Thank you all for being here and for making sure that you are heard. We are building a new society. We will change the system so the future generations don't have to breathe this poisonous air of racism. Before we have our next speaker, I just wanted to let everybody know that the Zetas are doing voter registration in the back. Could you put your hands up? Oh, there they are, the front, the front. They're right here and they'll be doing voter registration. Exercise your right to vote. And here's our next speaker. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Zena Whitworth and I represent Prince George's County Educators Association. I represent PGCPS. If I have any PGCPS Prince George's County M um, teachers in the house, just raise your hand and say, we right here, we here. We come down in solidarity to support you. We have to support you. What's going on in the nation right now is a travesty. There's no way that we can think about sending our children to their death. Even if it is or not, we don't know. But if we're not sure, we have to keep our children safe. On top of keeping our children safe, we got to keep our teachers safe. So, in all the things that matter, everything matters. And I'm remiss that we have to go through this, that this superintendent who is speaking up for Black Lives Matter is being persecuted almost for protecting or speaking on her own behalf. When we get these positions and leadership, 
and we have to compromise ourselves. As a black person, I stand here as a leader, saying a lot of times we have to weigh the odds, and it comes down to race, it comes down to the human race, whether you're black or whether you're white. This virus, this epidemic, this pandemic, what's going on in the world, this impacts us all. Everyone that is sitting here. And I had to come down because there's no way I can stand in Prince George's County and over here, you guys have to do this. We could have been doing this as well if the union did not put that pressure. The leadership of this country, of our, of our teachers, are making decisions not based on what is necessary, but based on a system that is designed to keep us a certain way. The minute we stray away from that and say, well, common sense says, if the children go back, and if they die, and the teachers die, the depopulation agenda is real. And I'm not trying to be a conspiracist. The only thing I'm trying to say is that we, what you're doing right here is the first step. And if every community and every town would do the same thing, we could shut it all down and protect our children. Hello, my name is Ian Stotts. I am just a student who goes to uh, Queen Anne's County High School, but... I'm young and I haven't seen a lot, but I try to care for everyone I know. I'm a very empathetic person, as my parents will tell anybody. And I saw on the news a while back, as everyone else did, that someone was killed at a store for simply using a counterfeit dollar bill, or $20 bill. Now, he was killed for simply showing up with counterfeit money, and then a few months later, someone showed up, and when asked to put on a mask, pulled out an AK-47, and started shooting people. Now this man, was white. The first man was black. Here's the interesting difference. The first man was killed. He did not do anything violent. He simply made the wrong move for paying for something the wrong way. Someone else shows up, looks different, kills people, and injures people. Interestingly enough, he walked away alive. Now, the mic went out. Oh. I don't think so. All right. Sorry about that. Anyway. Oh, that's much better. Anyway, best thing I can say is everyone needs to vote. I'm too young. I am too young. But your voice matters! But I see that people can win elections now without, without having the popular vote, meaning people can get away with winning and doing things that most people have said they don't want. And quite simply, that means every single person capable of voting who wants that to end, they need to get out there and work. My name is Barbie Glenn, and I am the second half of STAR students talking about race with Paul too. Uh, I want to just note that I got a couple STAR members down here, Riley and Tyne, who are down here with me. And I guess we kind of got things a little started <laughs> a few weeks ago. Um, and I have to say, we, we love Dr. Kane. The fact that she wanted to start this conversation here today, white people, 
I'm talking to you right now, okay? We gotta have this conversation. We gotta have it. Um, everybody's seeing everything that's flying around. I'm seeing and I'm reading some of these comments made by people who are saying that racism doesn't exist. So let me tell you why I know it does. So my family's lived here on the shore for 300 years. 300 years. Okay, so I'm from here. I know what exists. I know what gets discussed behind closed doors. I know the jokes and the innuendos and the comments and the denials. I see it. I live it. I've lived it. I've lived it. Okay? So it exists. So anybody who tells me that it doesn't, I'm going to say, are you from here? Because <laughs> if you're not, you don't know what you're talking about. Okay? The second thing is we got some research that's showing us the disparities in education and criminal justice in health systems, in all of these areas. We have research that's showing this. Where, where is the research of the people that are denying it? Where's their numbers? I want to see it. Show it to me, right? right? And I'm a trauma specialist. I hear the pain, guys. I see the trauma of racism and oppression. And I have worked in my 28-year career with thousands of people here on the shore. I know. I've been inside the lives behind in people's private areas to know exactly what goes on and what they've experienced. So you can't tell me it doesn't exist or that it's not there. And most important, I've developed a village for myself that is diverse, that I expose my daughter to. And I hear and I listen and I'm taking in everything that needs to be done to help with system changes, which is what STAR represents. It's a change in the education system. It's identifying and acknowledging that racism exists and beginning to have uncomfortable conversations about it. Yes. If Paul were here, he would be my hype man. <laughs> and everybody knows Paul too knows he would have you completely revved up right now. Paul, I am honored to work next to Paul. I know Paul's story. I know everything about Paul. And I would put him against anybody else any day, guys. Let me be clear about that. I put my license up against that. I know his story. And he, he, he's, you gotta hear him. You gotta hear what he's been through, okay? So I just wanna thank Dr. Kane for letting Star come in. And, and also, just so you know, those clutch conversations were fantastic. The students that got involved validated everything that we already know, which is yes, they're experiencing racism in the school system. Yes, they want to make a change. Yes, they want to have dialogue. And race is a social construct. This is not political. It's not. It's not. So thank you for those of you who participated in the STAR conversations. Thank you. Paul and I still plan on doing it. This isn't stopping us. We've been at it for three years. We're going to keep on going at it. I just want to say that Kent County is representing. I'm also here representing with Arlene Lee, Social Action Committee for Racial Justice, and CC's back there as well. So Kent County is in support of Queen Anne's County. We'll do whatever we can to provide you with the resources that you need. So thank you, thank you, thank you for letting Dr. Kane bring this in. I don't want to get too hot. <laughs> uh, hello, my name, uh, I wrote it down because I like to talk. My name is Marshall Rhines. Um, <laughs> I worked with the Queen Anne's County um, school system for 30 years. I'm now retired, thank the Lord. And um, uh, before um, Dr. Kane got hired, I was on the committee and I thank God that we had a woman of color that was able to uh, be able to um, be here at Queen Anne's County and know some of the things that we've already known for years, that there is racism here and black lives do matter. And one thing I wanted to share, I don't know how many of you knew her. She was a great friend of mine, Bishop Arlene Taylor. Yes, yes. And Bishop Arlene Taylor had the opportunity to be on the Board of Ed uh, with the, uh, mm, be on the Board of Ed. Oh, uh, Lord. But um, I really felt sorry for her. She was, she was sick around the time. But what happened to Arlene? They scorned her. A lot of people scorned her. They talked about her. They put her under a lot of pain and suffering. Even when she was sick, it was like they didn't even care because 
they didn't believe that a black person or woman of color should be on the board. And Arlene served on the board. And Arlene was one of the women, her and two other women, that helped to get Dr. Kane here and some of the other teachers that we never seen of color here before. And I've worked in the school system and I've seen children in the school system, only one of us and the rest was the other color, white. And we need to get together. I don't know how many of you knew that we were doing the Sunday supper. Nobody said anything about the Sunday supper. But the Sunday supper, it wasn't a private organization. The Sunday supper is when we, we got together as color. And it didn't matter who you were to share in the racism situations that were going on in our schools and in our lives. So I just want Dr. King to know that we love her. I told her I would definitely stand by her and I want her to continue to do and stand for what is right. And I want you all to do and stand for what is right. And it doesn't matter what color you are as long as you are doing and standing for what is right. Thank you. Before they leave, and I'll introduce the first one. Um, the first one is Dr. King's pastor, Mr. Bishop Cook, and he's coming to speak to everyone. All right, Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. I'm here because, I'm not just because I'm her pastor, but I'm here because her life matters too. And as you all know, some folks are ignorant enough to think that their threats can go as far as literally threatening someone's life. But what the enemy forgot is that they may have made their threats, but they got to deal with the whole army right now. You know, um, I don't think people realize that not all lives matter until black lives matter, bottom line. And so I wanted to share this with you, I'm a historian. I wanna share with you from Salisbury, Ocean City area, down through Madison, Cambridge, Graysonville, Annapolis, London town. We can go all the way down to Virginia, Jamestown. It was known as the East Gate. It was the doorway to slavery in America. But I'm here to say this day, that the same way a door can be an entrance, it can be an exit too. And this is where it begins, by changing education. When we change the curriculum, when we change education, we change the mindsets of the next generation. Black Lives Matter. We're with you, Dr. King. All right, everyone, the next speaker is Ms. Teresa Dudley. You don't need to spray it for me because I'm, I'm here by the power of the Holy Ghost today. Coming over that bridge was a mess. <laughs> My name is Teresa Mitchell Dudley and I currently serve as the president of the Prince George's County Educators Association. And I am also the chair of the Minority Caucus for the Maryland State Educators Association and I serve on the Maryland State Education Board of Directors. The Maryland State Educators Association and the National Educators Association is in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. And when I saw on the internet, because um, I'm a Facebook baby, you all can look me up, Teresa Mitchell Dudley on Facebook, don't look at the karaoke's. I had my moments. But I'm here today because the issue of Black Lives Matter and what is happening here with um, your superintendent is indicative of the institutional racism that persists and exists in the state of Maryland. I watched Harriet the other night. I watch it once a month because I don't ever want to forget where I came from and what ground I'm standing on. We have institutional racism right here in Maryland and let me show you where it show, tell you where it's showing its evil head. The governor vetoed the blueprint for excellence. 
that was a racist move and a bigoted move because the children that need that money the most are our black and brown babies and children who live in poverty. You can be white and be living in poverty. There's a whole lot of poor white people. But everybody wants to blame it on black and brown people as if we're sucking off the teat of America. I'm sorry, I'm just getting started. <laughs> How do we as a people, white people, brown people, yellow people, how do we mobilize and organize ourselves to make sure that we're not agonizing? Don't agonize, organize. Don't agonize, organize. Get your friends out. Get them to the polls on election day. Show them how to write an email letter to tell somebody that you don't like it. We're looking at a governor who also vetoed the funding after they lost the court suit to um, help our HBCUs. Our HBCUs are one of the core areas where we get educators of color into the state of Maryland. Now. They vetoed the blueprint, which would have created equity for our kids. If you're a special ed kid, if you're a black or brown kid, if you're in a high concentration of poverty area. Somebody told me, well, it's not that big a deal. I said, yes, it is that big a deal because there's poor kids all over Maryland. There's rich kids all over Maryland. And I'm not here from Prince George's County because everything's right in Prince George's County. There's institutional racism in Prince George's County too. We got brown people that don't think other brown children should be with them because they don't made it over to the promised land. They don't got their bit, they forgot what everybody else needs to have. So I wanted to come out here today, number one, to tell you all that I love you. I love you. I'm so proud of the people that organized this that I had to come out in support of, of Ms. Kane because if we don't stand up for anything, we are falling for everything. Yeah. Breonna Taylor, say her name. Breonna Taylor. William Green, say his name. William Green. Y'all know who William Green is? William Green was murdered in the front seat of a cruiser in Prince George's County in January this year. Clary Ross, Larry Ross. These are names that we should, that have been, have died in, in the hands of police brutality. And for Kane to stand up and say, well, I'm with that, I'm with her. I'm with her. I came all the way from Chillum to let y'all know I'm with her. And I'm with you, MSEA is with you, PGCEA is with you, NEA is with you. Stay strong, and if you want me to come back, I'll bring some teachers on buses if I have to. Okay, the next speaker is John Miller. There you go. Yeah, he wants to speak about the history of Frederick Douglass, and he here he comes. That's that for him, y'all. Come up here, Karen. This is my colleague with the Queen Anne's Educators Association. And she's going to have a microphone. If you're an educator in Queen Anne County, give a shout out. <laughs> Educators are about doing away with ignorance. So what I say, if you don't get on the justice train, we're going to leave you at the station. Vote. I forgot her in my comments and it was uh, charging to my head, not my heart. Hello everybody, came across that bridge, waited about 45 minutes to cross, I'm from D.C. I, gave, I heard you guys, woo, Washington, D.C. I heard you give a shout out to Paula too, I know 8th and Madison, Georgia Avenue, 9th and Farragut, you can come through and 
drink a beer with me later today for those who are adults, okay? Uh, so I know we're not, like, can't go to church, so I just wanted to give a little ministry related to history. First and foremost, I will say that some of you all know me, Mr. Potter, and some other activists know me because I wrote several stories about the death of Anton Black for the Washington Informer. Washington Informer, been published since 1964. All due respect, I knew you guys don't really have a black press newspaper over here, so I took it upon myself to cover some of the Eastern Shore issues, and it's very tragic because I know some of you have been following the legislation, Anton's Law in Annapolis. Quite honestly, from my perspective, as someone who's been on the corner since I was 14, it's not reforming the legislation to prevent someone from Webster or that officer coming into, whether it be Frostburg, Federalsburg, wherever. A lot of people have given it lip service. Don't know if Anton's name was mentioned yet today. It was very difficult to cover that story because I know people who have been murdered in D.C. as well as the 11-year-old who was shot behind the Frederick Douglass house. So I'm just going to say that because it's murder, 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 mayhem, mayhem, mayhem. And it's upon us, everyone gathered here today, to stop it in these communities. I knew about the shooter in Denton who was on the run. So y'all doing the marches, you can't have people shooting guns in front of kids, man. It's not cool. So there's a lot of stuff we're saying in Anacostia, black kids matter. Black coaches matter. I know there's some coaches here. Black families matter. And black communities matter. And for any, uh, I'm Germanic, so I don't use the word Caucasian. But for those, my fellow European brothers and sisters, the response to Black Lives Matter is not all lives matter. That's stupid. Okay, another thing I'll say coming from DC, with these Confederate flags, like just chill out, displaying them, because my niece yeah. wants her to come over here and see all that and have to explain what that is. Okay, so with that said, who knows? Because I spoke on it. I put down my corners, I put down my citations. I spoke at the library around the corner October 20. Does anyone, October 20, 2019, does anyone know that Frederick Douglass stepped through? Does anyone know? Who knows Frederick Douglass stepped through here? Okay, okay. Since y'all weren't at my talk, y'all, there's a lot more people, it's about 20, 30 people in my talk, I'll break it down real quick. Frederick Douglass took the steamboat, October 1879. Took the steamboat to Queenstown. Steamboat Ave, you go down the water, Frederick Douglass came across. Took a carriage, I don't really know y'all roads totally yet, but one of the roads, 213, something like that. Came over to Centerville, okay, he spoke to benefit the Masonic Lodge. Okay, I don't know if there's any Prince Hall Masons or Masons in the audience, but the Prince, what, different terminology, but the, what is today the Prince Hall Masons were established here in Centerville, late 1870s. For those of you who know the history of Queenstown, written by the guy Emery, or what's it, uh, Queen Anne's County Emery, I dropped a citation. He talks about the Masons being formed here. Frederick Douglass stepped through Centerville to speak to benefit this community. Okay, there should be trail markers, everything. Ann Shenawal. Is Ann Shenawal here? I know she's not. Because I reached out to her, I said, I got Frederick Douglass in Centerville. She said, we already have a walking tour. I said, oh my goodness gracious. Paid by the public treasury. It's your job to do this sort of stuff. I'll break it down further. Who's here from Crumpton? I'm sorry, keep it moving. They tried to murder a teacher from Baltimore who tried to set up a Freedmen's Bureau school in Crumpton. Frederick Douglass was friends with George E. Adams, who set up the Freedmen's Bureau school here in Centerville. Frederick Douglass had his Washington, D.C. newspaper. George E. Adams was the Eastern Shore distributor out of Centerville. So Frederick Douglass came through this community. Everyone gives Douglass and a lot of lip service to Talbot County, but you guys have sacred history here. Also, you may know the founder of the African Methodist Church in Florida is from where? Queen Anne's County. So we talked about the curriculum, we got the history. I, I, I'm breaking the history now. Everyone else getting cliches. Okay, cool. So appreciate y'all. Appreciate the hospitality y'all showed me. I, I'm, when I'm down south, I drive slow, buckle my seatbelt. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the organizing. So now we have Bishop Cephas. He's here from the Dorchester County area. And he has a few words he would like to say to everyone. He's a living legend. And he has been fighting this fight for, by himself for a while. So it's an honor to have him here. Good afternoon, everyone. Come on, you can you can shout loud. Let me hear you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The last time I came to Centerville, I came to stop the county commissioners from taking and putting black men and black women out on chain gangs. I said, I've been here and I know what you're facing. 
and to the superintendent, don't give up. Don't look down. Keep looking up. We got too many kids that need our help and her help. Too many of our kids are putting in harm's way. I want to tell y'all, this is your day, young people. This is your day. And to the young people that set this thing up, I would have came 200 miles to be with you. I want to let you know we stand with you in Dorchester County. And I'm not running for nothing. So they told me to be quiet because they told me that I'm too radical. So I'm going I'm to shut up. But I want you all to know that we stand with you in Dorchester County. Okay, everyone, I know this is the moment y'all been waiting for. Okay, so we're about to have Dr. Kane come up here and speak. And after she speaks, I'll open it back open for the public to speak, but this is really important. I really want to hear her speak. So. Good evening, everybody. First of all, please give it up for our organizers. Our young people who organize this, wave your hand. Without our young people, we wouldn't be here today. I didn't even know that they had called themselves together to put this together. I didn't know. I, I was sent a flyer through the email, just like many of you, and I couldn't believe it. I said, just like that. They flipped it, just like that. And it's that important. I want to hear from the young people. Make some noise for the young people that are in, in the um, audience today. Yeah, we're doing this for the young people. This is not about, let, let's, let me back up a little bit. My letter to the community on June 5th spoke about lots of things. Let's, let's be clear. When I say Black Lives Matter, that is not to disparage any other ethnicity or race. That is to call attention to the injustices, to the dehumanizing acts that are engaged on our African Americans, our Blacks, our people of color every day in America. That's why I said what I said. And what I also said was yes, I have absolutely, look at my face. I have absolutely experienced racism. I have absolutely experienced racism in Queen Anne's County. Absolutely. I know what our children go through because they tell me what they go through. Am I to stand silent? No, I will not. I will not stand silent. When I say to our community, let's be slow to anger. Let's extend grace to one another generously. There is no hate in that. There is no reason to be offended. There is no reason to spew the vile that has been spewed to me. There is no cause for that. So I'm going to say to you, I'm not silent. I'm not going to be silent. No. No. There have been many injustices toward me, right? Let's face facts. When I talk about the accomplishments of Queen Anne's County Public Schools, when I say we've been number one in the state in English language arts and math in our middle school grades, right? When I say we've had our first blue ribbon school in 20 years, when I say we are but the second district in the state of Maryland to have 100% of our schools, green school certified. When I say we are the first district to have a fully virtual program for elementary schools as a pilot in the state of Maryland. When I do all of those things, everything's good. But when I say I wanna call attention to the injustices of our black and brown children and become attacked, it's as if we haven't accomplished anything. And we have accomplished so much. We have so much to be proud of. This is a good school district. Our children, black, white, brown, 
all of our children contribute to the successes that we've had. We have worked on eliminating achievement gaps between our students of color, our students that receive special services, and the mainstream groups. That's work. That's not just Dr. Kane. That's our children. That's our teachers. That's our administrators. That's our parents. That's our community partners that support our schools. That's all of us. I cannot do this job by myself. I will never, you will never hear me claim that I did something. That's us. We do. We do. My friend Dr. Lamar Shields is gone right now, but he was here. And what we do in our school district is we do professional development on cultural proficiency. And we talk about bias motivated uh, behaviors. We talk about the microaggressions that happen in our classrooms every single day. We try to combat that. And the word that we like to talk about is Ubuntu. And if you never heard the word Ubuntu, that means I am because we are. I am because we are. And there's nothing more true and nothing more appropriate right now than that. I am because we are. We have to continue to support our children. We cannot be silenced. We cannot let today's rally fizzle out. We have to put ourselves to action. We have to stand up against the hatred that is out there ready to attack. I see my teachers out in the background. I need to hear from all of my teachers. We have to stand up against that. We have to call it out. You cannot begin to imagine how many emails I have received from our teachers to say, thank you, Dr. Kane, for calling it out. Because now when I see it, I'm not standing by myself when I say something. If you see something, say something. It's not just my job. It's for all of us. Our religious leaders have wrapped their arms around me. You heard from my pastor, Apostle Craig Coates, today, and I want to thank him, and I want to thank everybody who has come out in support today because I want to be real honest with you. Can I be honest? Yeah. When I was being attacked, I was angry. I was angry because I felt like we don't deserve this. I was so angry. We work hard. And we try to do the right thing for children. And that happens when we just want to talk about understanding and reconciliation and open up a forum, a safe venue for children to talk about race and their experiences, whether they've experienced it or whether they've observed it. We just want to do what's good and what's right for children. That's it. So I was angry and I had to consult with my pastor and he had to get me straight on a couple of things. Right, Pastor Reed? Um, because I was angry, but I have since embraced that ministry of reconciliation. And in order to have that ministry of reconciliation go to work and come to fruition, we have to be contrite. We have to have contrite hearts. We have to sometimes be broken so that we can receive the love, receive the understanding, and receive what's being said by our young people. So we, I had to go through that, and it makes a difference. I have a clear conscience today. We are doing the right thing. I need for my team, soon to be Dr. Paluski, Vanessa Bass, I have a board member, I want you to see, I have a board member Michelle Morissette, remember that name, who is here in support of what we are doing. Yep, right here. This is not new. This is my right hand right here. This is my right hand. And my left hand and my legs. This team supports me, and, and I know they really don't want me to do it, but I have to do it. I'm going to I'm try not to cry. Because this is how important these people are to me. My neighbors, they take such good care of me. 
They take such good care of me. Sometimes they don't even let me take my trash down to the driveway. They check on me and they make sure I'm okay because they know what's going on. They say, stand strong. They don't want me to worry about anything. They want, me to, they want home to be my solace, and it is. So I'm sorry, I don't mean to embarrass you, but I'm going to ask my neighbors to wave your hand, and if you do wave your hand, I know I can say your name. We're, 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 ah, it's Debbie and Alan Stevenson. These people are salt to the earth, I am here to tell you. They take care of me. Where's my son and his girlfriend? Come on, Chris. This is Christopher and Kara, and they stand with me. They are my children. My oldest son is in Seattle, and he couldn't be here. My cousin Lisa Stewart and her, Grant and her son Gavin Stewart, who have been here, you see him with the poster, and my sister, Stephanie Kane. These are my people, they support me. And I got some more sisters here. And they're gonna raise their hands. You see them with their AKA and all that stuff over there. Dr. Rotunda Floyd Cooper, her husband, is with her as well. Reed Cooper, their friend. Dr. Ava Tasker Mitchell. These are the people who have supported me when I cry. Right? They are here for me. They are here for me. So I want you to know, for everybody and, and I, a whole lot of other people who are here from Anne Arundel County, from Baltimore City, there, there's Myrna, there she is, and Myrna Phillips, my other sister, uh, and Baltimore sister, City, and Baltimore County, and Howard County, D.C. Uh, is here, MSEA, NAACP, QACPS. We stand together. And I know, I have said it again and again, sometimes as a leader you have to stand alone, but not now. This is not the time. And I am so grateful for everybody who has come out to support this effort. And, and the question, and I keep getting the email, so I'm going to go ahead and address it right now. I have been asked the question, uh, Dr. Kane, why are you saying that you won't stay? Well, first of all, let's be clear about one thing. A superintendent just doesn't declare that they are staying. You have to be offered a contract to stay. But let's not focus on that. I've raised this question. Instead of asking, why would I stay? The question really that needs to be asked is, are you in? Are you in? Are you about this work? Are you ready to take on this work? Whether I am here or not, this cannot end. This is not about Dr. King. Children of Queen Anne's County who deserve our very, very best. Every one of them, whether they are a child of color or whether they are white. So let's be clear. 84% of the students in our county are white. This is as important for white students as it is for children of color. There is no distinction here. We don't say one thing to black children and children of color and then another to white children. We're talking about all children all of them and we have to commit to wrapping our arms around our children give them a voice let them talk yes. they are what's going to make the difference yes. with race relations in queen anne's county i can guarantee you that so thank you for standing behind me don't let the fire go out this is just the beginning Say her name. Say her name. What a hard act to follow. We thank each of you for being here on today. And I would like to ask all the, the clergy that are here, faith communities that are represented, if you could just make some noise, wave your hand. We want to acknowledge those of you who were here that came out and some that left. Had the privilege of having Dr. Kane at our congregation to speak to our children for educational day. And that day I posed the question that today probably makes a lot more sense to her than it did then. I said, Dr. Kane, what can we as a community do 
for you. I found myself consulting my elders, and so on Thursday night, I shot out a text to my aunties. And it was a response that came from one of them that really shook me to the core. And that response answered my question. It also had a quote from a gentleman down in Dorchester County. And that quote was, racism is still in the soils and in the dirt of the shore. But apathy is great fertilizer for racism to fester and grow. I'll repeat that again for those who don't understand why we're here. Racism is still in the soil and in the dirt of the Eastern Shore. Apathy has been great fertilizer that has allowed racism to fester and grow. And I believe that quote goes to Mr. Lorenzo Hughes. Let's give it up for him today. In the few moments that I have today, I want to not speak to the choir because that's who you are. But for those who have a hard time understanding why we are here. Mark the 19th chapter talks about a sower who goes forth to sow a seed. It says that he sowed good seed, but while men slept, an enemy came and sowed tares amongst the seed. Now sue me because I'm on the steps of Queen Anne's County preaching. <laughs> we didn't quote it everybody. We didn't quote it Dr. King, but now I'm quoting the king. Amen. The king of kings and the lord of lords. And the householder that sowed the good seed was asked a question of his servants and said, we know you sowed good seed. So where did these tares come from? He says an enemy has done this. So I want to pull on your heartstrings for those of you who cannot understand why we're here. For those of you who are uh, uh, accusing us of counseling uh, a council culture. I want you to search your own heart. And in what you are attempting to call good. To be able to identify in your heart the tares that have been sown by an enemy. When an enemy launches an attack, it's only a fool to attack him one way. But I came to pull on the spiritual side. We've heard the natural side. Remember in November. We know we got to go to the polls. You, you know what to do in the natural side. Is to get candidates in that think like you. That will promote your cause. You know what to do. To love your neighbor. But what you going to do in the spirit realm. That's why I'm here. I might as well come out the closet. I'm a Pentecostal preacher. Yeah. Racism is not a people. Racism is not a profession, but racism is a pattern of thinking. In the Bible, we call it a stronghold. And the word of the Lord tells us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So I submit to you today, brothers and sisters, that in addition to us, amen, using our feet to walk and to march, I want you to start bending your knee in prayer and begin to pray that God, amen, will change the heart of man. Thank you, Father. I would not take this opportunity lightly without taking us to the spirit of what's behind this thing. The word of the Lord says in St. John that we all have an enemy. Black, white, straight, gay, we all got the same enemy. And he announced his agenda to rob, kill, and destroy. And you want me to believe that it's only black or white? No, this thing is spiritual. How do I know? When I have some friends that are over in Dover and in the Newark area who are recovering from a tornado that just hit this week. When I had some uncles and family, I had to, had, had to check on in North Carolina from an earthquake. But yet we have to be here to fight just for the elevation of the black life. So ask yourself a question for those who don't understand. Why are you triggered? Because black lives do matter. So I pray that I've given you some spiritual tools to drop on your knees in prayer. Amen? Amen. Because in addition to what we do, because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. I know y'all might not came for this, but I got to give it to you. 
Our weapons are not carnal. We can't outcuss the enemy. Hallelujah. We can't match them all the time. But if we can release a heavenly arsenal. So God bless you. And thank you for the young people. Thank you for the young people. I'm a native and I'm not naive. We support Dr. King.